You are listening to the Effective Statistician Podcast, the weekly podcast with Alexander Schacht and Benjamin Pieske designed to help you reach your potential, lead great science and serve patients while having a great work-life balance. <music> In addition to our premium courses on the Effective Statistician Academy, we also have lots of free resources for you across all kind of different topics within that academy. Head over to theeffectivestatistician.com and find the academy and much more for you to become an effective statistician. I'm producing this podcast in association with PSI, a community dedicated to leading and promoting the use of statistics within the healthcare industry for the benefit of patients. Join PSI today to further develop your statistical capabilities with access to the ever-growing video-on-demand content library, free registration to all PSI webinars, and much, much more. Head over to the PSI website at psiweb.org to learn more about PSI activities and become a PSI member today. Welcome to another episode of The Effective Statistician. Today, I'm super excited to have Pablo with me here. Um, statistician that turned into a programmer and that has a lot of interest into the relationship between biostatistics and IT. And just from my personal experience, that interface is not always easy. So, but before we dive into this, Pablo, maybe you can uh, introduce yourself shortly. Thank you very much, Alexander, for having me here in the Effective Statistician and to be a part of one of your podcast editions. Well, I'm in the, in the pharmaceutical industry for more than 40 years. I started as a statistician and held several positions, also in IT, marketing, sales, came back to statistics, and then I discovered my passion, that is statistical programming. That's about me. Awesome. So in terms of your experience with the biostatistics function, and of course, that includes programming, how is the, your experience in terms of the relationship between IT and our function? Yeah, that's a very interesting question, Alexander. Thank you for making it. Uh, I tell you, when I started, I started on paper. And I had a, a very big paper, a huge paper, where I had my rows and my columns. It was my database. <laughs> and, uh, well, I kept statistical formulas in my head in my, and looked at documentation also if I needed it. But books, books, not, not as these days. It's beautiful these days. And then it all this, all this started evolving from, well, mainframes, of course, that existed, and then uh, standalone PCs, client server solutions. And these days, the buzzword besides AI is cl the cloud. Yeah, everything is in the cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and of course, IT enables a lot of all the things that we do. Yeah, without IT, we, you know, couldn't do lots of the more modern day calculations like Asian tools were really just made possible only after very much increasing the calculation power. So in my early days, the Bayesian statisticians always said like, yeah, if we would be able to compute it faster, then we could do these kind of things. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine that. Well, when while you started using, you were happy if you could do a proc frac, or a proc report, or a proc tabulate. Now this has evolved a lot. You have SAS, you have SAS Foundation, VIA, uh, you have R, you have Python, and those are you have S uh, SLC. That is a SAS analog analog software. 
So you have a very broad spectrum of, of tools these days that uh, allow you to do these very complex statistical analyses, uh, develop the models, and have very fast results, of course, depending on your hardware resources, depending on your on your network resources. But, the, but that's it these days. You can solve very complex topics in a more easy and comfortable way than years ago. Fully agree with you, Alexander. Yeah, and as you speak about hardware, about uh, speed, about cloud, these services all are provided through our IT departments, uh, either internally or externally. Now, what are actually the more specific services that we as a biostatistics community rely on so that we can do our day-to-day -day work? On the one side, you have the hardware. And on, on the hardware side, you have you have, could have a standalone solution where you have the software as a SIG client, a SIG client is where, is where the software runs on a PC like Microsoft Word, about standalone SaaS with Display Manager, which is no longer being used as such in, in, in let's say, in, in client server or cloud uh, solutions. You can talk about SIG clients. You can talk about SIG clients when we think about SaaS Studio. And you can as Enterprise Guide, SLC Workbench, R Studio, for example. So, so let's first start with that. So the kind of standalone that is when everything is on your laptop, PC, whatsoever. Yeah. It. And it all stays there. You don't need an internet connection. Everything is there, more or less. Yeah. It. And then the the client is basically like in the former days where basically your entry, your laptop or whatever is just the interface to the computing environment that sits somewhere else. And that could be kind of in the cloud or it could be in a server that is related within the company, so to say. Yes, yes, uh, that's completely, completely true. Yeah, point is you have the server it is called, the solution is called as on-premise. Mm -hmm. You have a server in a, in a company, maybe in your own country or in some other country. And that is, there you have the core software. The and software, so if, you, if you talk about on-premise, that is basically on-premise is kind of the opposite of in the cloud, so to say. So, so on-premise means you own these kind of servers or you have rented these, but they, they are kind of, you control them, so to say. You own the servers. You okay. own the servers. And you can also rent them uh, uh, if, if, if you want a software solution outside of your company, you can rent the server. And there, let's say, let's put it like this, you have their SaaS, the, the core SaaS, all the elements that make SaaS happen, mm -hmm. and you have the client on the other side. I call it a SIN client in this case, because in the case of SAS Studio, all you have to do is have a link and through that link, access SAS. Mm -hmm. It okay. is also an, 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 an IDE. It's also an IDE. Since you can write code, you can write code, push the code to the, to the server, to the cloud, and then it comes back. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, and that is something difficult to understand for for common for the common user for the for let's say for the statistician also many times for the statistical programmer. That separation of the of the server part or on, on premise or the or the cloud part where where your core software relies on and the sim client part where uh, the the software used to to connect or interact with the, uh, with, with the core software and send information and retrieve information in the form of results, for example. Okay. So, and one of the things that your IT department should kind of help you with is to decide whether you want to have kind of a, a local solution 
a solution on premise or a solution in the cloud? There are se uh, several departments uh, that interact there, mainly IT, of course, but uh, a business owner, let's say a very proficient SaaS user, who could be the business owner of, 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 of SaaS, would also support the best decision. And of course, you have your enterprise, let's say your fi finance manager who says, okay, we can do it, but look at the costs too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's, it's an in integration of many elements, but mainly, of course, IT, the business, the business owner, finance, as, and of course, the company where you're going to purchase the software from or where you're going to get the, the license from for, for a, a, a specific time period. Let's say SaaS, let's say Altea. In the case, in the case of, of R and R, are on the cloud or are stood in our studio. That's a different story, but there are some other issues to consider. Okay. So that is kind of part of the hardware that we need. Any other important hardware elements that we rely on as statisticians? Yes, yes. Uh, if you are on a client, you are you are, you are using your notebook or your PC as a client. You should have an amount of of memory. I would say at least 16, 16 gigabytes of RAM memory, five hundred mega gigabytes of of hard drive, and yeah, a, a useful graphic card. Yeah, so that the process runs smoothly. That's just the physical part. And then what is what is very important is the connectivity, the okay. network connectivity. So uh, if you're working from home or you are you are in your office, in the office it's easier because you are directly connected to the to the source to the server. If it relies in the same country, if it relies outside the company, well, IT takes care that the connection is stable. But in the case of a user working from home, you have a download and upload upload processes. Download is when you send the information. Upload is when the information comes comes back to you. And I would recommend having at least 100 Mbits for download and 20 Mbits for upload, minimal. Yeah. That was my recommendation. On the one side, on the other side comes uh, topics like VPN, firewalls on the IT side, uh, stability of the server, have the server big enough to, to support the software, have the server for your for your data, for your programs. All that has to be taken into consideration and the stable and the stable communication line. That's a challenge these days. It's beautiful, but you have to take several considerations too, so it works smoothly and properly. Yeah, so these are kind of all the security aspects, isn't it? VPN. It's Firewall, VPN, Firewall. antivirus software, spyware software, all those are security topics, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. that is definitely another service that we very heavily rely on. And of course, given that we work directly with highly sensitive data and pretty costly data also, it is really important to make sure that everything from a security side of things uh, work well. That's the math, especially, in, as you say, you know, in our environment, the pharmaceutical industry, where everything is very regulated, the, you are owner of the data, the data are very sensible, that has to be take, that taken care of. You can, of course, play around. I just read, it was a couple of days ago, something about PT now for data analysis. You can integrate it with, with very well with Google Drive and do fantastic things. That's beautiful. But the point is security, validation, checking of checking of the data. Well, checking of the data you have to do by any means. But the main issue there is security. Security of your data, yeah, and that your processes and your analysis processes run well. Yeah, that is another kind of interesting area. When when we talk about data manipulation, programming, storing these kind of things, all these documents need to sit somewhere. 
Yes. And so this needs to be in, in a regulated environment and a validated environment as, as far as I understand. So how does IT help us in, in that regard? Well, then there comes another component in a company. There comes now uh, the quality control department. It takes care, for example, and gives the guidelines on how you should do your, your, your validation. Of course, with the help of IT, and let's put it as I know it, with the support of SAS. SAS, for example, has an IQ OQ uh, process. Besides that, you have to do your own, uh, prepare your own programs to 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 validate that when you migrate from from one SAS version to a newer one, that everything everything continues running running fine. Yeah, that's very important, and you should stack in any case. Be it SaaS, that that would be my 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 recommendation, my choice, that you have a ver also a versioning component. Let's yeah. say the latest SaaS version of SaaS Foundation, SaaS or SaaS Analytics, is SaaS 9.4 M8. M9 is coming this year, but you have to be to keep track of that, yeah. And yes. also the, the thin client component. Now this year, uh, Enterprise Guide eight point four is coming out. Of course, you don't if you don't have the nine the the via version, you can say you you keep stack on Enterprise Guide eight four and eight eight three. Pardon, not not not, not, not eight four. And because you don't need the rest, but point is you have to have a clear concept of your versioning, and that also is is the same for for R. In yeah. R, you have to stack on, a spe on specific versions of R, mainly of R, which is the core, and also of R Studio. Yeah, that that is very important. You you just mentioned two acronyms, IQ and I think OQ. What does that mean? IQ is the installation qualification tool that ensures uh, that our software is installed properly according to the manufacturer's specification, in this case that, and that the environment is set up correctly to support the software. Okay, and that, but that is basically the same for any software, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And uh, that generates a document that you uh, store for auditing, for example, and everything should be okay. Okay. There is a failure. You have to go back to it, contact SAS, and sometimes there is a hotfix that is not not up not applied yet, or something not applicable. But that that has you have to clarify with SAS. The same is clarifying the operational qualification. That is the the other tool, the OQ. That follows the installation qualification of IQ. And this used to verify that our software operates according to its intended use in the specific environment. That is, would be in, in, on the server, in the cloud, or a standalone on a PC, for example. Yeah, that's it. So those are two steps. But additional to that, it is recommendable that you have your own test cases, your own programs that reflect your analysis, for example, your analysis and the output process. Well, it happens, it happens, and I experienced that many times, that when you move from one SaaS version to a newer one, there are issues that do not work as they used to work previously. Especially, my experience was mainly with the ODS area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you have to make sure that it works. Otherwise, you will have some work afterwards on that. <laughs> Especially for any macros or any kind of other kind of standard programs that you use. I guess that is especially important that you kind of check all of these in a kind of right. standard way, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. So that's definitely a discussion you want to have with your IT people, because very often the IT department is also responsible for purchasing, updating, installing, all these kind of different things. Well, my recommendation would be in the case of SaaS to do the installation together with SaaS. 
Ah, okay. You know, department and book two or three days at least to have that done. Because it's not a, a simple uh, uh, process. In R, well, I personally actually have an R version on my on my Mac environment and an R version on my on my Windows 11 environment on the same computer on the same Mac. It's easy, and I can can do every every installation I want and any version I want. I'm, I stack with the latest version privately, but I do not recommend that in a in a company environment and. IT then plays a big role in maintaining that once it has, for example, in the case of SARS, I come back to SARS, been installed in administering that when hotfixes have to be installed in SARS, IT takes care of that. IT takes care that the users are assigned on a, a operating system level and on, on, a, on, a, on a SARS level. Um, that the the capacity of the of the disk space is okay, that the internet connectivity works fine. Those are the main tasks of IT. So IT um, basically also very often takes care of licensing and these kind of things. Yeah, that depends on the company's policy. It could be IT uh, or the business owner. Okay. Okay. The business owner, for example, in my latest company was the direct, director of statistics. Yeah. And yeah. it could be it could be him, it could be IT, it could be a power user, it depends on the company policy. So these things are definitely important aspects to have a good discussion with IT about. What else are typical interfaces and, and services that statistics and IT need to work together on? I can give a good example. Connectivity part. Why the connectivity part? The user has to be aware that he needs a minimum requirement to access us on a server or on, on a cloud. Um, uh, the most common uh, statement I heard was, SaaS is not working. And SaaS was working fine. But the uh, Wi-Fi connection, I recommend an Ethernet cable from computer to, to, the, to the router. Ah, okay. with a, stable, a stable connection and have, as, as I said at the beginning, 100 bits download and at least 50 bits upload. And not too many users, let's say at home, to work, yeah? to work, uh, to, to work so the system, so the system, so system work, yeah. That is, that is a complex part. The other part, the other part is uh, statisticians, statistical programmers understand that when they work in a client server or in a, in a client cloud environment, that a SYN client is not core SaaS because sometimes expectations are that SaaS is not working because Enterprises Guide is not working or SaaS Studio is not working, but that's not the case. There could be, once again, connectivity issues. Or we want to have the latest Enterprise Guide version or the latest SaaS Studio version so that we have a better SaaS. It's also not the case. The case is it's not an... It's, it's, you do in your in your smartphone if you want an app you direct you directly download and it and then everything works fine here's a it's more tricky it's more complex there's the client and the server part mm -hmm. okay what can statisticians and programmers do to improve relationships with statistics and make sure that there's a mutual understanding and let's say Less conflicts. Well, I would I would like to come back to your leadership course. <laughs> <laughs> communication is very important. And communication is interactive definition. I understand that there is some stress uh, because there are deliveries, deliverables to, to, to send and uh, things like that. And important is that that communication that uh, have the understanding of what is happening. So for that comes definition and be colleagues from statistics and colleagues from IT clear on what it means working in a cloud environment, working in a server environment and knowing this 
connectivity tricky issues. Yeah, yeah. I think it definitely helps to have some understanding of the background of the of IT, so that you can better work with IT. You can ask the right questions. You can also understand a little bit more of the language they use. I never kind of stop to ask when I don't know something or when I don't understand an abbreviation or if they use some kind of terminology that I don't know. It's it's really important to ask and not just kind of to think, well, I will look stupid if I, if I ask. Well, it's completely okay that you don't speak IT. It would be not okay to just pretend that you speak it and then get in kind of disagreements, misunderstandings there. Yeah. Yeah, I fully agree, fully agree with you, Alexander. And once again, making promotion to your course, that is part of your course. And I will recommend everybody who wants to can attend attend that, that course. Yeah. And well, I want to also say a secret. Well, I had been uh, head of IT several years in the 90s. So for me, it it it, it is and it was much easier to interact as a as a as a statistician and a SaaS user with 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 IT. And and know what to ask and what what to do. It would maybe be great that within companies, somebody having having knowledge on that to interact with IT and, and statistic colleagues from statistics and explain that. Yeah, would yeah. also help to to make it smoother. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, especially with all the modern approaches where you want to do very computer intensive uh, and resource computing time intensive research they are having a very very close relationship with with IT is is very important so that they aware about what you want to do how much resources you need another thing that is really important is check assumptions yeah so you may think like well this is cheap or this is expensive It could be exactly the other way around because based on corporate agreements, some things are super easy where you think it's super complex and the other way around. Yeah, and it's that's very important what you say. And in this, I my experience says you can you can have agreements and have, can get very good very good prices on on And also, it is sometimes you get what you pay for. Not sometimes it's get what you get what you pay for. And the other, the other part is especially finance departments. I'm not criticizing them, but it's also my experience. They want the cheapest, the cheapest solution. And what is mainly seen by that solution is the peak of the iceberg. Yeah, yeah. Of a solution, the peak of the iceberg, and that's that can have catastrophic consequences yeah if 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 not not sized right let's say not sized the the the, the when well, in the case of the cloud you can start with the size and then you can you can increase uh, memory you increase can increase disk size can increase number of processors of course you have to pay for that um then you can handle it it a little bit more flexible yeah but when you buy a server for example and you have to to calculate how much memory you need how much hard disk and after a couple of years you see hey it's running out and i have to purchase another another hard disk or etc yeah things like that yeah and not to mention the software not to mention the software yeah i said r is a beautiful beautiful uh, software but i would my suggestion is having a validated and validated and secure software on top like I'm, I'm not being paid by SaaS but I want to say it is SaaS via yeah. SaaS via and in SaaS, SaaS via you can start with, with what you know in, in SaaS and then move to cloud cards that is cloud analytics services And everything have, have have everything running very fast in the cloud, yeah. But that would be a next step, yeah. And you can would actually you can integrate Python, and you can also in future will be integrating R into it, 
of of course the 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 R lovers will say, hey, but you have R Studio, and then you can also integrate Python. Well, but you cannot integrate SAS that way. Yeah. So so better is the other way. Or if you want to stay on foundation, you could do it on foundation using Proc IML. Or if you want another solution, you could look at Lautea SLC and uh, integrate uh, R or integrate uh, a couple of, 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 of procedures who would how to do that. Yeah, and for all these kind of different things, we will also put some reference links into the show notes so that you can uh, see what we are all talking about. Now, thanks so much, Pablo, for this very, very good discussion about the interface between IoT and statistics. I guess this will not be the last time we talked about topics around this. We talked quite a lot about what is, are all the services provided by IT, both, both hardware, structural services, um, software services, other help services, all these kind of discussions around it. And you mentioned, thanks so much, <laughs> the leadership program, that a good collaboration, of course, always depends on good communication, building trust, building relationships. And this is exactly what I, Gary and I talk, to, talk about in the Effective Statistician Leadership Program. Now, if you would think back in your career, what has been the best advice that you can give to any statisticians in terms of making a relationship working relationship with IT better? Where, where do you see the biggest, biggest advantages or opportunities? I would say talk with them. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, but talk, you, not just email. <laughs> no, no, not, no. Uh, you know, email, email is, 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 could be the beginning, but the best thing would be to talk. Yeah. Ask and ask. And ask, and also from the other side, uh, I, 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 it has to be reciprocal. Yeah. So, statisticians ask, statisticians ask, IT answers, IT asks, statisticians answer. There has to be that uh, sort of relationship yeah. that would make everybody happy, and everybody would agree that 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 would be a situation to take, to profit from, not to, I wouldn't say to take advantage from, but yes, to take advantage of the opportunity, not yeah. of the person, but of the opportunity to have that kind of interaction. Yeah, make sure that everybody benefits from the interaction. That's it, yeah. Totally agree. Thanks so much, Pablo, for being on the show. Alexander, I want to thank you very, very much for this opportunity to to share some ideas, which I hope uh, will also be useful to others. It was a pleasure being here with you. Thanks so much. This show was created in association with PSI. Thanks to Rain and her team at VVS, who helped with the show in the background, and thank you for listening. Reach your potential, lead great science, and serve patients. Just be an effective. Thank you.